Oh yeah, it's that time again for a new retro car, and this time for the first time ever, everything's been captured in 720p. A true HD version of retro car. Unfortunately, some games do have a bit of screen tear in them. Oh well. So here we go, kicking off this week's show with Ghostbusters for the Sega Mega Drive. Hang on, where's Winston gone? How does they always miss out Winston? So our Ghostbusters get the call to go and save some poor unfortunate woman from her house being completely overrun by ghosts. Oh, she's having sleepless nights. Poor lady. So you can select which Ghostbuster you want to go. I've gone Peter since he's the all-round um, balanced guy. <laughs> Just trying to figure out which buttons fire there and wasted two bombs. So the idea of the game is pretty simple. You walk around these people's homes, which uh, seems to be massive. And you find the sub-boss, and then once you've taken out the sub-boss, you go and take out the main boss. Here we go with the sub-boss for the first stage. Now depending on the level depends on how many sub-bosses there actually are. So of course being the first stage there's only one sub-boss. Okay, so on to the main boss we go. This is the main boss by the way, and yes he's dropped a segment of the uh, ancient stone. Of course, you need all these segments to get to the final boss of the entire game. So once you've cleared out a house of all the ghosts, you go back to the Ghostbusters HQ, get a bit of a story, and then visit the shops. In the shops you can buy various weapon upgrades for your um, proton pack. As well as that, you can also buy some food and accessories such as bombs, uh, the night vision goggles, I can't remember what they're called now. And so on. Also, from completing the first stage, you can now choose what stage you want to go to next, which is very handy. Now, graphically, this game is quite pretty, considering it was one of the earlier Mega Drive releases. Here we go, a lovely power up there from Slimer. He's a good boy, isn't he? Playability wise, the game also fares quite well. There are times that you do find your Ghostbuster getting a little bit stuck when you're putting in the uh, diagonal directions, but um, apart from that, it's pretty much solid. Oh, also you can't actually turn around when you're crouching. So make sure you're facing the correct way. Right, I think I better uh, equip my bubble gun and a bit of peeking duck will go nicely as well. One bad thing I'd have to say about Ghostbusters, and that would be that it is quite difficult. Even on the normal level setting, it can be quite a challenge. So it's definitely not a game you're going to get through it on your first sitting. Which is something that's a good point, but some others that's uh, a bit of a pain in the ass. But overall, Ghostbusters for the Sega Mega Drive is one of the better early Ghostbuster games. In fact, it's not one of the better, it is the best early Ghostbusters game.
Oh boy, we got some real shit for you today. D-Force, or Dimension Force, as it's known in Japan, for the Super Famicom. What a fucking heap of shit this is. Yeah, okay, so we start off the game with some really nasty, shitty looking scaling. And as the shitty scaling scales out, we get to see even more shitty looking C. Oh, where the fuck are the enemies? Oh, where are they gone? Here they come. Wow, generic slow pattern. Like, the Super Famicom really has got an awful lot of shitty shoot em ups on it. Now, to say that you're the shits of the shit shoot em ups is, is really saying something. This game is fucking awful. Enemy patterns are all generic. In fact, talking about the enemy patterns, they just repeat and repeat over and over again. And there's no thought gone into them whatsoever. They're just throwing it throwing onto the screen. It's like, look, what, what the fuck? It's just like a cluster fuck of bloody projectiles coming at you from nowhere. Just from everywhere, it's just a fucking joke. Not to mention the game's play could slow down. Now what the hell are they? Ice cream blobs? Where the fuck did he come from? No warning, no indication. Uh, bloody hell, did you see the way it moved? That was one of the most fucking agile airplanes I've ever seen in my life. So anyway, here we are about three minutes into the same first bloody level. Still not up to the boss. Oh, I ain't got music change. Cheesy shit music. I uh, take it this is the boss. Shit, a lot of thought must have went into that. Jesus. So yeah, as you probably noticed, this game is completely utter shite. The graphics in it are fucking awful as well. This is actually the second stage, uses the same water from the first stage, and believe it or not, the third stage is actually the first stage, but a different colour and a slightly rearranged background. And also on the second stage, with no warning whatsoever, you're now able to use the L and R triggers to zoom the screen in and out to shoot things in the distance. Fucking whoopie do! The game doesn't tell you that, you just sort of accidentally press the L trigger or the R trigger, and the screen zooms, and that's how you figure it out. Just look at this boss! It doesn't fucking do anything! Yep. D-Force. The shit is shit him up on the Super Famicom. Fucking crap. Well, there you have it, you got to have S. Boris and his skidhead gang. This is an AB Cop by Sega for the arcades, released in 1990. I always did want to play this in the arcades, but I never did find an arcade that actually had the game. Now, thanks to the magical powers of MAME, we can play at home. But I do sort of wish I did get to play this game in the arcades. I'm not too sure I'm playing it correctly. But what I can gather, it's basically Chase HQ on a bike with some classic very late 80s, early 90s arcade music. Basically, at the end of this road, we've got the boss guy. But you can only reach the boss guy once you've taken out all his uh, subordinates on these um, seem to be normal motorbikes. Once you've taken them out, the boss guy will appear and basically you just either jump on top of them or grab the shit out of them. Very simple. Like I said, chase his cube on the bike. It 
typical classic early 90s Sega arcade. Something that should have been ported to the Sega Saturn. In fact, they could have released them so many of their arcade games for the Sega Saturn, but they never did. So many great classics from Sega. Creature on the loose. Bring it in alive. Fuck that, I don't just kill it. Now it may look like the game's dropping a lot of frames, but actually the game moves that fast. I think my capture card had a bit of trouble keeping up with it. It really does move at a fast pace. Very impressive stuff. So if you're a fan of Chase HQ, I certainly do recommend giving AP Cop a bit of your time. A lovely, enjoyable, no-brainer game. So here we go, starting off a brand new feature for Retro Core. Back when I was young, the phrase Arcade Perfect sort of meant an arcade conversion that was very good. To be honest, there never really was an Arcade Perfect game on the 16-bit machines. So today we're going to take a look at just how developers translated arcade games to the 16-bit platform. We're taking a look at Ghost Chaser Densei for the uh, Super Famicom. Very rare beat em up, which is based upon Denjin Makai, which is actually the exact same game, considering it's got a different name. From the arcades, both games programmed by Winkysoft. And both distributed by Bampresto, believe it or not. So on the right hand side you can see we've got the arcade version. The audio you're listening to is actually from the arcade as well. And the right hand uh, the left hand side we've got the Super Famicom game. The Super Famicom version does look like the arcade, you can't really complain really. Everything's a bit smaller, but you know, it seems to be there. Enemies crashing through the window, smashing the crap out of the UFO catches, it's all there. I must say though, on the Super Famicom version, there aren't any actual uh, glass sound effects when you smash glass. So we just saw the transition from the first stage to the second part of the first stage. Very faithful on the Super Famicom, but for some reason the sewers have no water in them. Probably down to a lack of memory space again on the cartridge. And again the transition to uh, the third part of the first stage is quite faithful to the arcade. A 
Now you would notice that on the um, actual character select screen, the arcade version of the game it has six characters, whereas the Super Famicom version has only got three. And unfortunately, one of my favourite characters, the Purple Head Woman, is actually missing from the Super Famicom game. Major Bummer. Yep. And the level boss seems to be pretty much the same. Of course, a bit smaller on the Super Famicom version, but um, seems to be in there. Strange thing is that when you kill the uh, arcade version of the boss, he actually transforms into this mini robot, which he doesn't on the Super Famicom version. Another interesting thing missing out of the Super Famicom version is the ability to choose your next stage. Classic Namco Arcade, this is Boss Konyan, but this is actually an arranged version by Dempa. Dempa being the people who make those lovely XRGB boxes, now known as uh, Mycomsoft. But I'm sure I've said in the past, Dempa used to make loads of arcade games or arcade game conversions for various consoles and computers. So Dempo have given us the original game. Yeah. Fairly basic. Pretty good fun. The idea of the game is to take out all the enemy bases, which you can see as the little blue dots on the uh, purple, purple looking uh, map to your right hand side. Take out all the enemy bases and it's uh, mission clear. Obviously, Dempo thought that the original arcade was a bit plain, so they've given us these rearranged versions, which feature some fantastic quality soundtracks. Oh man, I do miss these classic chip tunes. You, know, you get a lot of people these days making so called retro games. 8-bit retro games, they all look the fucking same. What about 16-bit stuff, guys? Don't give a shit about bloody 8-bit shitty blocky graphics. Or was it just an excuse for not being able to do any good art? This is classic retro gaming. Quality kick-ass chip tunes, along with addicting gameplay. Graphically, nothing so special. At least it doesn't look like a lot of blocks. I can see the more you progress into the levels, 
more difficult it becomes. Now the enemy bases sort of have eyes open and closed, making it a lot more difficult to take them out. Track it down if you can, and I'll see you in the next Retro Core.